In this video, we're going to discuss some new features for calibration released in Anywhere 761. The main features are creating calibration work orders new and follow up in the field, uh, some usability improvements for accessing calibration point details, and finally, completing repeatable data sheets. The first scenario we'll be discussing is the creation of new and follow up work orders in the field. So the use case is as follows, a calibration technician is in the field and realizes that a, an instrument needs to be calibrated for whatever reason. So he can create an, a new calibration work order or a follow-up calibration work order from his mobile device. And the key part of the calibration work order is the data sheet that has all of the requirements needed to calibrate the instrument. So a couple of things to remember about the approach we're taking. Um, Calibration technicians can only create new and follow up calibration work orders in connected mode right now for 761. To associate a datasheet to the asset or location on the work order, the datasheet must be associated to the relevant asset location or item in Maximo. You can create loop calibration work orders. Also, Maximo 7605 or higher with the latest interim fixes required for new and follow up work orders. Maximo 75.x versions will also respond. Please contact your support channel for further information. So let's go through the creation of a work order. So they tap the top plus button. That brings up the new work order. So you would enter your asset details, for example. Then you need to define at a minimum the work type as cal, so it needs to be cal or a synonym to enable the addition of a datasheet. On the datasheet line you tap the plus icon and you look up the datasheet that's associated to that asset. Tap add and back to the work order details view. So you can tap create. So there it is um, in the work orders create locally. So you can change the status to begin work on the data sheet. Sending it to approved. ESIG here, for example, might be required, so you enter your password and the reason for change. So there we go, and you can see on the data sheet line there is the data sheet that you added. So you would complete it as you would any normal data sheet. Enter the nominal input, desired output. So one of the key usability enhancements, you'll see the in details icon. So you tap that to access the calibration point details. You find your as found tolerances and your as left tolerances and errors and, and asset function details. So this is kind of secondary and tertiary information that may or may not be important to the technician. Um, and rather than having them drill all the way down into the calibration point uh, themselves to find this de information, we, we put the uh, details icon up front and center on the calibration point, so it's much easier to get to. The next scenario we're going to take a look at is the completion of a repeatables data sheet. Repeatable data sheets provide the ability to repeat individual calibration points a user defined number of times. These are for devices such as balances that often require a test weight, for example, to be placed at several different pan locations, for example, around the corners and the center. And so for these repeated points, tolerance limits are computed based on the average test point value. So a couple of things to be aware of here. Um, the number of times that the calibration point is uh, entered or repeated uh, is defined in the data sheet configuration in Maximo. Also the asset function needs to be defined as a repeatable in Maximo. And finally the validation is performed on the device itself and so it's suitable for both uh, connected and disconnected mode.
So let's look at a repeatable uh, work order. So go down to the datasheet entry on the work order details view. Tap onto the asset function, you'll notice the repeatable checkbox is there. And you'll see here the view is a little bit different. Um, we put the calibration points at the top level, so you go into each one. Uh, in this case, you need to enter it three times. So you see one of three, two of three, three of three. If it was five times, it would be one of five, two of five, and so on. Basically, whatever is defined in the datasheet configuration. So after all the data has been captured, it calculates the status based on the average. And see, in this case, it has failed. So they can tap on the icon to see more information. So notice the average as found output and input, and also the standard deviation, which is also a calculation captured. So it's pretty much the same process then for the remaining two calibration points, each of which need to be captured three times. So here the overall status is uh, adjust to improve. So the final calibration point. and this one has passed. So you tap the button at the bottom to calculate the as found status and because the widest tolerance is fail and uh, this status has failed. So you continue then to do the as left calibration points and pretty much the exact same process, right? So pass for the first one. Make the second one also pass. I missed a spot here so it doesn't let me complete until they're all entered. So this one's also pass. And the final one passes as well. So when you calculate the as left status, it should come to pass, and so it is. And you see that the data sheet inherits the same statuses, and that's pretty much your repeatables um, work order. So if you have any questions about this functionality or calibration on anywhere in general, uh, feel free to reach out to me, Tristan O'Gorman and my email address is there on the slide. Thank you.